Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. I'd like to uh, welcome you. This is my um, uh, first Woodblock Wednesday after my exhibition. I've uh, posted a, about almost 30 new Woodblock prints on my website. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, I encourage you to go up uh, and check them out. Uh, there's a nice group of uh, Meiji and Shinhanga prints. And, um, you know, I thought that today would be a great opportunity to discuss two prints that are currently on my website. Uh, they are available for sale. And um, I, on these Woodblock Wednesdays, I like to mix it up. Some things I discuss with you are from private collections. Some of them are from my own collection. And some of them are on my website. Um, these two are... Uh, as I said, on my website, um, and the really wonderful, uh, fun designs. And so, you know, without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. <clears throat> so I laid these uh, side by side. Um, here, I'll move back a little bit so you could see. I laid them side by side um, so you could kind of see the, uh, how, in some interesting way, they sort of face each other. And, um, you know, so... They're both works by um, early 20th century um, um, print artists. Um, we'll discuss this one first. Um, this one is by Ohara Shosun, and uh, his dates are 1877 through 1945. And uh, the print uh, is called Crow on a Snowy Branch. It, is, it was done in, around 1910. And, um, uh, you know, just a little bit about Shosun. Sho Shosun, first of all, went by a few names. Um, he was known by Shosun, of course, by Kosun and Hosun. And it really depends on the, the publisher he was working with that particular, for that particular design. Um, he went by that name. And, um, you know, it, it gets a little bit uh, complicated. But at the end of the day... It's the same artist, and he was interested in primarily the same thing, birds and flowers. And in this particular print, we have a wonderful um, crow that is on the snowy branch. This design is a, a really famous work by Shosun. It is uh, a design that you see on the cover of catalogs and auction catalogs and magazines uh, that, that discuss Shinhanga, uh, particularly bird and flowers. Um, and so in this design, we, we have a wonderful sort of red-orangey color in the background. And this is a variant. There is another impression uh, of the same design with a gray background. And this is a, a much more dramatic work. Uh, and so here, let me see if I can pick up the print and I can show you. Uh, the first thing I want to discuss is how beautifully it's printed with this black, shiny pigment that's in the feathers that really gives a sense of crow feathers. Um, and, and that was done with a, a pigment that is almost like lacquer-like. It is not lacquer. And it's a mix, done with a mixture of glue and a, and, a, and a different type of pigment that gives a sheen, um, uh, a, a, a higher reflective quality to it. And so you see here, this is kind of a black matte uh, color, but in the feathers, particularly the, 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 the lines that outline the, the different feathers, you, you get a contrast um, in the feathers as well as this really wonderful dynamic with the light reflecting onto them. And so this is one of those designs in Shinhanga that you just sort of, you know, when you think of Shinhanga, when you think of bird and flower prints this is one of the designs that you think of it's iconic it is one of those um, designs that um, captures people's imaginations as well as hearts if you love crows this is definitely one of the designs that um, you would love and on this impression uh, one of the interesting things i'd I'll like to point out is that this is wonderful wood grain in the background here and that really is indicative of early printings because the wood grain tends to wear down quickly as printings um, continue um, from, the, from the addition. And so you could see this really strong wood grain. That may not be as visible 
on my website pictures, and that's because it's just hard to capture. But on the print itself, really wonderful wood grain. And the other thing I want to point out on this design is that you often get this bokashi um, around the bird in a different configuration. They're never exactly the same. Sometimes the red bokashi comes up and it's a little bit stronger here. Sometimes uh, it's, it's further down here by the feathers. So the, the, figure, the configuration of this strong, intense, orangey red is always a little bit different in each impression because that's uh, done by hand on each block. There is no registration block for bokashi. Uh, bokashi meaning the gradation of light to dark or dark to light. And so this is applied by hand with a brush um, and the intensity of pigment um, on the wood block. So you get a different effect on each print. And so this is one of those sort of signs that you see on a print that the, a wood block print is done by hand. So I, I think it, the, this is quite neat. Uh, the other thing I should point out is that this design, um, there, there's some evidence that it was reprinted later in the 30s or so. And one of the things that you can kind of tell uh, for later reprintings of this design is this, this seal by, um, by the artist here is missing. And uh, you see just the signature. So you, when you're looking for th this design and you're interested in purchasing this print, make sure that there is a, uh, a seal there because you do see them in the marketplace without them and those are later. And most likely they're done um, in the 30s, maybe even post-war. It's not really known exactly when they were reprinted, but they were. So I, I should just point that out. And I'm going to zoom in so you could look at the print. So, uh, almost sort of to create a pair, I decided to pull this print from my exhibition. This is by Zeshin, Shibata Zeshin, and um, his dates are 1807, I um, mean, passed away in 1891. Um, Crows in Flight at Sunset is the title. And Zeshin's an interesting character. Um, he's a fantastic artist created some interesting prints, or beautiful prints. Um, but he was um, uh, one of those artists that did a lot of things really well. He was an excellent painter, and he also worked in lacquer, which is sort of unusual for woodblock print artists. So you do come across his lacquer work quite a bit at auction, um, and they, they get a, those, those pieces fetch a lot of money um, because he was a great lacquer artist. And one of the things about Zeshin, I think, um, is great is that his love of lacquer I think translates really well in printmaking. Some of his most desirable prints uh, feature black and I think that's that comes across because he, he was a really he was a fantastic artist working in lacquer and knew the color well and knew how to sort of implement black um, on paper, either as a calligrapher, as a, as a painter, um, or as a woodblock print artist. So if you come across Zeshin's paintings, you'll see what I mean. And there's also some that I've come across that there are paintings, um, but done with lacquer, real lacquer. And they're, they're rare, but they come up for sale. And the last one I saw was uh, of a crow. So you can imagine that this design was sort of born from th this work um, with lacquer and this interest in this black. And so um, in this design, you know, this is one of Zeshin's most celebrated designs. I mean, when you think of Zeshin's wood black prints, this is, this is iconic. You think of this design. And we get um, in design these, these crows flying through the, um, the sky at sunset. And um, you see that this beautiful, subtle, soft orange is behind them. 
and they're positioned in an interesting way. They're almost sort of positioned equal distance from each other, creating a pattern. And that that's interesting because I mean it it reminds one of Japanese textiles, um, that sort of regular sort of um, motif that is done over and over again. Um, so there is that quality to it, but there's also this really wonderful sort of whim, whimsical quality to it. The crows um, seem to sort of be, you know, sort of, they're caught in midair, but there's this wonderful sense of movement um, through this design. And that's because of how the, he designed um, the upper part where you, he cuts off the, most of the crow. We only see the back end of the tail there. So you, you just see that little part. And so most of the crows um, in this composition are not shown entirely. This is the only one, and he, it's barely squeezed into the um, the composition. So there's this wonderful sense of drama and movement in the print. The other thing I think uh, that's quite striking about it is that though it's a sparse design, there's a lot of empty space here. The way that um, he shows the, the crows is really powerful and potent. Um, and um, in this crow, he darkens it. So it's quite dark here. And then he lightens the other two. And that creates a really sense of contrast, but also depth, and enhances that sense of movement across the, the, um, the plane here. So that's, um, that's some things I'd, I'd like to point out for the connoisseur. Much like the Kosun that we just discussed, there are later impressions of this print, and they can be identified by the lack of the red artist seal here. So, you know, if you're interested in this kind of uh, this design by by Zeshin, do not purchase it unless it has this seal. There are later reproductions of this print too that are just basically, you know, in, in a in a nice way. I mean, they're reproductions, but they're basically uh, forgeries. They were done in the 20th century because this design was so popular um, that this design was recarved and reprinted. Sometimes you see it with a border, and that is not uh, from, by Zeshin. It is a later reproduction. Um, and then sometimes um, you see it with a, a different configuration of this writing here. This is his signature. He also indicates his age. Um, and so it's in interesting. It, he, this is one of his last works, in fact. I think Zeshin died a year later after producing this design. And so much like Hokusai that signed his prints or his paintings rather um, with his age sometimes he would sometimes sign something like old man um, mad um, um, with painting at age 88 or 80 or something and so Zeshin kind of did that as well um, and and so this design is also sort of he Zeshin's kind of indicating that you know that he have his age at this at this point in time and i'm not sure if he's thinking whether he he's sick or he's uh, he knows that he's going to pass within a year or so but this print does have this sense of uh of time as is it is as is it is progressing and moving swiftly and maybe it was his way of expressing that um it is interesting to reflect and consider all those things uh, the other thing I'll mention about this design is that the background here is this really water, wonderful, subtle orange. You you see impressions with a really bright red background. Those, by and large, are later reprintings. And you, you, they most of them lack the red seal. I, I think m entirely all of them do. Now, there are some variants um, in Sozeshin in his lifetime, there were prints produced with a, a, a richer background that does read uh, as if it's red. The, I, and so you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You have to look at the print, the key block lines, make sure that it's the exact blocks. And then you also want to make sure that it has its seal. So it's one of those things about collecting prints that you want to be careful Usually for ukiyo-e prints, that is a concern, making sure that you have an original impression dating back to the Edo period. But in this case, um, this is one of those rare Shinhanga prints that were 
sort of produced um, throughout the 20th century. And so you want to be able to determine that you have an early printing. So um, I'm going to stop talking. I'm just, I just want you to um, admire the print. So I'm going to zoom in. We'll go over to the other one that we just discussed. One of the things I may not have mentioned is that uh, I'll back up a little bit so you you could kind of um, see both of them. One of the things that I didn't mention is that uh, the Japanese really have a love for uh, these crows. Uh, I would say. Any major artist that produced um, bird and flower prints, of course, dealt with the crow motif. And um, so there's several out there. I mean, and there's a lot of paintings that feature crows. And, and crows have been celebrated for so many things. Um, you know, in the West, they kind of get a... Some people kind of give them a bad rap that because they're so dark, they might be connected to death or because they do eat... Um, roadkill and other things like that. But in Japan, it's different. Um, they're revered. Uh, uh, they're birds that are majestic and beautiful. And the designs that you often see featuring these uh, crows um, have a background of, of snow, which only seems to accentuate their the depth of the black in their feathers. So, uh, so it's one of those things that I think if you're interested in crows, uh, Japanese woodblock prints um, provide a wonderful outlet to that interest. Now, in terms of the size of this, uh, this is sort of a, this is not a full Oban sheet. It's almost done to mimic a scroll format. So I don't, I don't have an Oban print right here. Um, uh, but it's one of those things where it, it's basically um, um, almost Oban in size. And in this case, this print's a little bit smaller. And this was done almost like a Shiki Shiban size, um, which is a sp special size for prints or paintings that would be applied to a presentation uh, board, a Japanese presentation board. So it's a standard size board. And so it's roughly around... Um, the 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 size of that but um because of their different um size configurations as opposed to the other shinhanga prints that we normally see there's also something really interesting about them the format in in which they produce sort of echo the design motif in each of these prints and create a really successful sort of um view it, it's it's a design that the design reflects the, the shape, and the shape really reflects the design, and both work in, um, in concert with each other to produce a really great um, design overall. Uh, and so this is one of those things that, you know, we don't often discuss in Japanese print collecting, um, you know, the sizing and the formats and how the, the size and the format may work for or against the design. They're not always this successful. Uh, different formats uh, sometimes sort of, you know, they, they work against the design in some cases. Um, not often, but I, there are some examples that I could probably one day bring in and, and show you. Some of them seem kind of clumsy. But these two prints are, are the opposite. They're great. The, the shape of the format um, really echoes and strengthens the design. So... You know, again, these are two iconic designs um, of 20th century uh, Japanese printmaking. And I'm going to zoom in one last time so you could admire the print. And of course, both of these designs are on my website. So I have really large uh, scale images there. You can visit at collectingjapaneseprints.com. Click on Winter Acquisitions or Winter Editions, and you'll be able to see these, and you can look at the large image and admire the, the prints on your screen as well. 
Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me uh, on Woodblock Wednesday. And I want to thank all of you who have uh, sent me messages and questions. And, and so I want to encourage that. If you have any questions about the prints, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to field those questions. Or if you have uh, particular requests uh, for future Woodblock Wednesdays or anything, really, you could private message me. That, that would be great, too. And of course, uh, feel free to connect uh, to me on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. And if you want to be informed on what is happening in on the website, uh, feel free to join our mailing list on my website. You can submit your email uh, to our email list and then you'll know exactly what is happening. And a lot happens on our site. We regularly uh, curate exhibitions, uh, which are available for sale, as well as our bookstore. And then we offer you know, a section uh, for collectors and connoisseurs on you know news from all over the world where there are exhibitions featuring Japanese prints. Of course, there's a lot of information about things going on in Japan as well. And hopefully travel will open up soon and we could visit Japan and discuss all the wonderful things happening there. And one last thing, um, later this month, um, I will be hosting a, my next seminar um, on early 20th century Sosaku Hanka. Um, and so, you know, I'll talk about this as, as that day approaches, but I just want you to be mindful that it is, uh, I believe, on the 22nd, which is a Saturday, um, and it's during the day. So um, I'll, I'll give more details about that as we um, approach uh, that date. But um, the last seminar went really well, and I had a lot of views, a lot of questions, a lot of comments. And this exhibition, uh, this, this seminar sort of was born out of the previous one and you know so I dealt with Onshi's circle of print artists and, I, and a lot of people asked me well what came before and so this is really a survey of of the early period of Sosaku Hanga from 1904 to about the earthquake and I'll be mentioning artists such as Yamamoto Kanai, uh, Tabari Kogan, Minami Kunzo and a few others so um, of course I'll mention Onshi uh, being one of my favorite artists, he was active during the early period of Sosaku Hanga. So I'll mention him and, and, and a few of his friends. But uh, anyway, that's coming up soon. So we'll discuss that uh, as uh, uh, we approach that date. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy my other archive videos. So if you go to my website and go to Woodblock Wednesday, you can check out all the other videos um, that I've done over the last year and a half. So Thank you again for joining me, and I will see you next week on the next installment of Woodblock Wednesday. Until then.